The original Razer Death Adder was one of my first gaming mice. It has always been a mouse I thought very highly of. Ultimately, I moved on from it as it was just too big for my hand size. I think that many users have had the same or similar experience that I did. Fast forward to today and we have lighter mice with better sensors. Razer has taken all that progress and applied it to the tried and true Death Adder. How does it compare to today's lightest and best? Let's take a look at the Death Adder V2 Mini. Alright guys, checking in today with the Razer Death Adder Mini. I was really, really pumped to get my hands on this thing. Uh, you can see I actually imported mine upon release since I didn't know how long it would be before it ended up in the US. But I just couldn't, couldn't wait. I ended up getting on the uh, Reddit mouse market and participating in a group buy for the imported version. And the reason being that I was so excited about it was I used the original Death Adder quite a bit when I was uh, first getting into gaming, like a lot of people, I think, before lighter mice came around and stuff, and I was always quite fond of that shape. And then I slowly transitioned to smaller mice. I, as a reminder, I like to use a claw grip. The thing that was so appealing about this was having that nice shape in a smaller form factor. I just couldn't, couldn't wait to see how it compared to my two other favorite mice the Razer Viper Mini and the Final Mouse Ultralight 2. So I got it in-house, used it for about a month and a half, and here we are. So I really wanted to spend some good time with it, so I felt really good about this review. When you look at the build quality of the mouse, it really is. They did a really great job replicating that shape. The side buttons are obviously a little smaller, which is nice. The uh, overall build is very light, has the um, matte side for a better grip it's not it's not rubber or anything like that just a nice matte finish to it the finish feels pretty good and grippy overall and the buttons really feel pretty great we'll do some sound testing with them and stuff the mouse wheel has some nice stepping to it it's very very similar to the viper mini but not the same and i would say it's better slightly better than the viper mini and slightly worse than the ultralight too but shape wise when you look at them comparing size they're it's the smallest of the three which surprised me i didn't quite expect it to be that small over time you know the ultralight 2 has been my favorite but i've needed the largest back on it and the viper mini is a very very close second i really enjoy this mouse quite a bit the death adder mini took some getting used to right away because it's so small it's definitely comparable to the ultralight 2 without the back on it and so even for a claw grip for my hand size feels real small the good thing about it is if you're a fingertip grip this would be right up there probably these would probably be your top two choices to date and i think just due to availability and price this would be a great candidate the cable is really pretty great you know we're in an age of great cables it's not as stiff as either of these two but it is a little fatter than either of those two i'm i'm fine with it you know as long as the cable's pretty good i don't have any real uh detractors or or anything exciting about it i still actually i think the ultralight 2 has the best balance of size and give you know the viper's a little more stiff and i i like how but this one's this one's closer to the shoelace style so for whatever that's worth in comparison for some uh let's do some maybe some button sounds and comparison of clicks and then we can take a look at software too when we finish up so here is the viper mini And I believe that those main buttons on these two are the same. I believe it's the same internal buttons. I haven't looked online to see if they are or not, but they feel and sound the same to me. The ultralight two feels like a step above those. The side buttons, here's the Viper.
I'm kind of indifferent on those three. I think in practice, I, I still like the Ultralight 2 the best, probably the Mini the second, and then the Death Adder Mini the third, but they're very, very good. I would say if you have small hand size or a fingertip grip, it's real tough to go wrong with this one. I do like that the DPI setting is on the top. The, the feet are fine. They're not great. They're identical basically to the Viper Mini. I'm real excited to see when I get my Glorious D minus how it compares to all three of these. It's a very good mouse. I think for me as a palm grip and a medium sized hand, it's just a little too small for me. So I do prefer the other two. Uh, this is my one and one A and they're so close based on price. I would recommend this all day long to anybody, uh, but very, very close. This guy I like just as well is this one in, in practice if your hand is the right size. So if you have a smaller hand than I do or if you're a fingertip gamer. Hopefully that's helpful as far as build and size comparison. I'm, overall, I still think that it would be one, two, three. And uh, I actually think I would, I would even consider a regular Viper or a regular Model D over this for myself just because I'm not a fingertip grip and it just gets to be too small for me and I lose control a little bit. So uh, hopefully that's helpful guys. All right, guys, so just a super quick look here at the software. This is the Synapse software for the Death Adder Mini. You have the general button customization here that you always do. Uh, nothing really noteworthy here. Um, the hyper shift configuration here. Under performance, you have the normal stages for DPI. You are maxed out at that 8,500 DPI, but again, we're looking at $50 mouse, so it's kind of nice that this is where they're saving the money on a, a sensor that is proven to be pretty solid. You have the standard polling rate options. And then generally a lot of lighting options. Thankfully you can shut them off or max out bright, brightness or set idle timers on when to shut it off, that sort of thing. And then some advanced effects as well, which is nice. And then lastly, the calibration. So nothing really special here. Pretty basic. Uh, I believe it is identical actually to the Viper Mini. So ultimately, Razer was able to take the Death Adder V2 and just shrink it down for a smaller hand size, which is great. On top of that, you get a nice lightweight mouse, a shoestring style cable, and a $50 price point, which I think is fantastic. You know, the one I imported came with a free mouse pad for that 50 bucks. I think the US official release has grip tape included with it. I mean, you're just getting a ton for your money here. And the, the awesome thing is that the consumer is winning. You can get a lot of great mice for under $50 these days. So this is just one more outstanding applicant into the market that I think people can look at. So if you like the Death Adder shape, but it was too big for you, great. You have a winner here. I love this mouse in practice. I think it's awesome. And I think if you have a smaller hand size, you can easily, easily buy this mouse and be very, very happy with it. So. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. You know I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can keep doing reviews for you. And as always, stay safe out there. Take care.